Hello everyone, welcome back to my second video. In the last video, we did the initialization of everything we need to start developing STM32 on Linux. So here I am back in the folder that we created last time with the example empty main and the make file. I explained it what everything does in here. And if you're wondering about that, you can check the previous video. There's also a download link so you can download this uh, whole folder. So today we're going to do some simple GPIO manipulation. Uh, we're going to manipulate the LEDs according to the push button, a little bit of blinking uh, for today. And the next time we're going to do some protocols. So today we want to blink the LED. To do that, we will need some libraries. We will need the GPIO and the RCC library. On the left here, I have the standard preferred driver folder with all the source and include files. Those appropriate are opened on the right side. Those are the GPIO, CNH files and RCC, CNH files. The GPIO file includes the functions and all the declarations for manipulating GPIO and RCC includes everything for manipulating clocks. So firstly, we need to start initializing the clock. This is because everything on the CPU runs on the clock and only runs synchronous. No, not everything, but most things run synchronous. So that's why I need to connect a clock to it. That, that way we go to the rcc.c and now we want to enable the right clock for the right thing. To do that, I'm going to go to the st.com and go to my discovery board. This is it right here. And in the user manual, it says that there are four user LEDs on GPIO 12, 13, 14 and 15. And it's called LD3 and it's named PD. That's called port D. So if we look a pinout on the internet, we can see the whole board and the pinout. Those are four LEDs and port D, five uh, appropriately uh, for these LEDs are 12 through 15 and those are here. So 12, 13, 14, 15. And it also says LED1, 4, 3 and 2. Uh, so this port. So we need to initialize the clock to the port D. This is the port that manipulates all the pins on its uh, uh, connected to it. So go to the RCC and search for GPIO D. I will come across this function that enables the clock to all of these ports that are right here. Uh, because not every clock generated inside the processor can go to every port. Uh, for example, here is the AHB2 that only goes to this ports. And uh, there are high speed clocks that only go to certain uh, ports as well for communication. So we, I just copy this function and we need to fill it in. The first parameter is the application or the port where this clock wants to go. So we want to connect to the port D. So this is this one. We can just copy this one inside and the new state. The new state is enabled. So we can enable the clock. Okay, so we enabled the clock. Now we need to configure our GPIO so it will work for our case. So we need to have LEDs blinked on and off. So we need to output the state on the GPIO and we need to uh, make it uh, so it's a push-pull configuration. So it will hard drive it one and zero. For that, we need to go to the GPIO.c and we have the GPIO init function. It's uh, it's similar to this one for the clock uh, and we see all the parameters GPIO we have to pull in the GPIO we want to manipulate and the pointer to the structure what is the structure I copy the name of the structure go into the .h file and search for it and here's the declaration for this function so it's in its struct so if we go up here we have all the declaration and here we come across the structure of this type. So GPL init type def. So in, to initiate a structure of this type, 
So we're just gonna call it like this function calls it, gpi init struct, which is the simplest. And to save time, we're gonna copy the values right from the gpl struct init function. This function assigns default values to the init struct, and we can see all the values, pin, which pin we want to mod uh, modulate, uh, mode it's in, speed, output type, and pull up and pull down. So now we can copy all this and modify just those that we need. Because in here the passing argument is the uh, pointer, and here it is the structure itself. That's why we need to convert these arrows into dots. Check out a tutorial online for structures and uh, pointers if you don't know what's going on here. But basically, we manipulate the GPL pin variable inside of structure to this value. So the GPL pins are, again, 12 to 15, as it says in the datasheet. So we need to type in 12, and we can do it for this way, and we can just OR all the values at once. So we're just gonna OR all this at once. So, because everything that does this function is gonna copy these variables, the, the tell which LED is this, or which pin is this, uh, is gonna write it to a register. So we just OR this together, it's gonna write all these pins at the same time. So it's the is the same as uh, declaring it multiple times. Mode, we need output. And by the way, we can go into the H file, and here we have every declaration for every mode. So modes are these four. Input, output, alternating function, it's for uh, protocols, and AN, it's for analog mode. But we need output for now, so we type in out. Speed is 2 MHz, plenty fast for us. Push push is one of two options, or open drain. Open drain isn't uh, cannot power; it can only pull the pin to ground. So this is ideal for uh, this is uh, called for tri-state outputs. But we need push pull for now because we have to hard drive the pin high and low. So we leave it at push pull, and the PUPD determines the pull up and pull down uh, resistors inside the IC. We don't need any, so we type we keep it at no pull. So, as before, we visited this function called gpio uh, init, and we can copy it. So, all the settings that we did for the structure right here will be applied to the appropriate gpio. So, we type in gpio d and uh, appropriate pointer. We need to pass in a pointer to the structure, so that way we pull in the end, so it's gonna point. To this structure uh, and pass it right here. So we have our GPO initiated, clock initiated, now I need to just write it. So to manipulate GPIO, we're gonna do it inside this while loop. We're gonna go into GPIO.c and scroll down. There's a section for GPIO read and write. We need to go down when it starts for writing. Here we go. GPIO set bit. This command sets the appropriate pin on the appropriate GPIO passed in as our argument. That way we copy it, declare the, the pin that we want to blink, let's say 14 for example, and the appropriate GPIO, in our case it's GPIO D. To pull the pin low or set it to zero, we reset the bit, so we reset it to zero. We use this function called GPR reset bits, and it does the same as the set bit, it just pulls it uh, to zero or uh, in our case to ground. So we declare everything the same, we could have just copied the upper one, and this is it. This is gonna turn the pin on and off effectively, but this would happen at slower but around 2 megahertz it could be that's that's too fast we couldn't see that that way we need to delay the processor the easiest and most lazy way is to just pull in an empty function so the processor wastes time so we can just make a for loop with the i equals zero 
and to delay it for half a second so the period of the blinking will be around a second I found that if you divide the frequency of the processor not the crystal but the processor then uh, by 30 you get half a second very close to it you can go into datasheet uh, to the beginning it says in here somewhere that the processor runs at if it does oh well, maybe not the processor if you look at the data sheet uh, this discovery board runs at 168 megahertz so we go in here and type it 168 but that is also stored in a variable for called in my cheat sheet called system core clock this is a variable that holds uh, the system core clock so we divide it by 30 I++ plus plus. and now if you were to put just an empty function our compiler would try to optimize it and ignore it because it's an empty for loop that's why we give it an empty function called NOP with two underscores and this is just an empty function that has a predictable amount of uh, cycles that it needs to be done so everything this so this whole for loop with that function is spending half a second and we do it again so we turn the pin on for wait uh, waste time for half a second turn the pin down waste half a second and again in a continuous while loop now this is all okay but now we have to modify our make file so we can compile the functions that are uh, that we just pulled out of the GPIO and RCC.C files uh, because if we don't include them they won't be compiled so the compiler will give us an error that's why in the previous videos we have these two lines commented out and these are the lines that include the sources for RCC.C and GPIO.C so we will also compile these two files now we can go into our terminal into our documents folder into appropriate folder here we can see all the appropriate files we can run make and this is going to compile our files here you can see that it just created bin alf and hex files and if we uh, say make burn it's going to write it to the uh, to our board okay i'm back uh, i just found out that i forgot that i is less than this number so i will be incrementing towards this number and now if i turn on my camera okay oh just switch you can see the camera uh right here so this is the led for the pin 14 we can check it in here uh if we go up where the LEDs are uh, configured and we can see that LED on 14 is the red LED so the red LED is blinking right now at a period of approximately one second oh, I just close Atom, great okay so now we have a blinking LED I promise you I will do the read as well uh, quickly now so if we go back to the data sheet we can see and the pinout that this user button according to the data sheet which is a push button user is on pin 0 of port A so we need to initialize the port A as well firstly the clock we can com uh, we can repeat this command or in the likeness of these pins we can also or this two times so we can write to A and D at the same time so we need to write the clock to the appropriate pin and now we're just gonna copy all of this and modify just those parts of this structure that need modifying first part is the pin which is the zero it's input because it's a button uh, this is all okay and let's just add a pull down resistor just to make sure and we need to initialize the GPIO A. For now, we just comment it out and add an if statement, and we're gonna compare if the pin is pressed. This is reading pin. In Arduino, you would say a digital uh, read, 
but this doesn't uh, exist here but we have other things and we have it on the beginning it's called the gpio read input data bit its parameters are the gpio and the pin this is perfect this is the function that we want to see because it returns the status of the pin so if the pin is pressed the status will be one returned into the if statement and so the if statement will be performed we just have to choose the correct gpio in our case is gpio a and the pin is zero if this happens we want to for example why not just turn on all the leds so we can do the same thing as here we can just or every pin in here because this is going to become one big number or variable that's going to be written to the register for turning this uh, bit on so we're going to turn all of this on else else turn all the pins off this is quite inefficient because every time it will check it will turn all the pins off again and try to do the same you can use flags so you can check if the pins have been reset yet so it just ignores and doesn't go through all the procedure but for proof of concept this is good enough so we read the state on the input of the button if it's high enable leds else disable them we can save this go back to our make it compiles with no problem and burn them and as you can see on our screen which is on there is no LED on except if we push the button the LEDs light up all the LEDs great so in this video we got the input working and GPL manipulation and clock this is basis for everything you have to do everything that uh, connects via any pin and that's all the protocols all the pins everything so this is the basis for our next video which will be on U uh, usart or i'm gonna be using the uart part of it uh, to communicate via serial protocol to my computer so we can see what's happening on the processor uh, by sending something over your uh, words or anything like that uh, you would use serial print on arduino but uh, here we have to do something else so stay tuned for the next video thank you for watching and see you next time